Then action. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Bryn. I really love making time-lapse videos. Today, I'll be looking at what amount of time is required to take photos of your desired subject in order to achieve the length of footage that you want. I'm not going to focus too much on the process of making or editing time-lapses. Rather, I'll be looking at a spreadsheet that I've put together to show the varying amounts of time involved. But firstly, I would just like to clarify one point. Many people like to video their subject and then speed it up in their editing software. They often refer to this as time-lapsing. But most purists wouldn't consider this to be a real time-lapse, rather just sped up video. I think this can result in some impressive looking videos, but today I will concentrate on the main method, and many would say true method, which is to take photos at regular intervals and compile them in a sequence to make a video file. Now I've seen a lot of time lapses posted on YouTube that are really short. I think that's because while time lapse videos are awesome to watch, they take a long time to make. So how long do they take to make exactly? There are a few things to consider in this equation. Firstly, what is the subject of the time-lapse? The frequency of the intervals will depend on how quickly the subject is moving or changing. This can be anywhere between a photo every half a second or up to one photo a day. If your subject is people or other fast-moving objects, you would normally choose a frequency of between maybe half a second and five second intervals. If you are time-lapsing clouds, you would choose perhaps 2, 5 or 10 seconds, depending on how fast the clouds are moving. Star time-lapses commonly use 30 or 60 second intervals. If you are making a time-lapse of something where change unfolds very slowly, such as fruit decomposing or a construction site, then one photo every hour, or even one photo a day, may be suitable. The second thing to consider is how long do you want the video to go for? At one second intervals, it is obviously a lot quicker to make a video than at hourly intervals. This means that the longer the interval, the more time will need to be invested to get your required footage. Some topics are limited naturally. For example, a star time-lapse sequence will be limited by how long it stays dark for. You can take photos all night, but the sun is going to come up in the morning whether you like it or not. The third thing to consider is at what frame rate you will be making the video. This will mostly relate to the frame rate that you have your editing software set to. In Australia, we use the standard PAL frame rate of 25 frames per second. In the US, the standard frame rate for NTSC is 30 frames per second. You could even use the cinematic rate of 24 frames per second, but I will just be focusing on the first two here. After that, it's just basic maths. I have compiled this reference chart to help calculate how long it takes to create a time lapse for intervals between half a second and 60 seconds. Times 30 seconds by your preferred frame rate. This column is for power users and down below is for NTSC. This will give you the number of photos that will be required. You can then times that by your required interval to arrive at your camera time. So, at 25 frames per second, a one second interval will require 12 and a half minutes of camera time 
to achieve a 30 second video clip. It can also be seen that at 30 frames per second, the required camera time increases. If you are taking star time lapse footage, then 30 seconds of footage at an interval of 30 seconds will take power users six and a quarter hours and NTSC users seven and a half hours. And that doesn't leave much time before the sun comes up. I will make this chart available as a download by putting the download link in the description below. Waiting while your camera takes time-lapse photos can be one of the most boring things you will ever do. So if you can leave your camera on its own, then that's a good idea. If you can't for security reasons, then make sure you take along a good book to read or some crossword puzzles. Many a good time-lapse has been ruined through impatience. I think the results are well worth the effort. This is Bryn. Thanks for watching.